Hi everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. Happy Saturday. I'm going to continue the carburetor series. I get an awful lot of questions uh, from folks. Hey, do you have a replacement carb? And I usually respond with, hey, if you still got your original, rebuild it. I mean, it works 99% of the time. In fact, there's only been one carb that I've ever given up on, and I think I know what that was. It was years ago, and I didn't realize that uh, the HDC check valve was as important as it is. So it was an old EZ, one of the blue ones. Anyway, we're going to go through every carb that I come to that I haven't chronicled. We're going to do one of these. So this is the Tillotson HS series. Very commonly used on home lights. This one's a 4D, which makes me think that perhaps this has been changed out because typically the early Tillotsons had the big barb but I'll have to go back and look through the uh, the IPO for a Super XL67 and see if perhaps the uh, Canadian models were produced with the smaller barb earlier in any case I don't know if there's anything wrong with this carburetor uh, I don't have any idea to be honest I know the rest of the saw looked like rancid heck so we're just going to go through this and double check everything. So I think I've talked about it before. I like to start on the fuel inlet side because that gives you a really good idea of what might be going on. If you're going to have dried up fuel or stiff diaphragms, usually you're going to find it over here first. Not always, but usually. These HS carbs are super, super simple. Not much to go wrong in them. Get your cover to pop off. If you can, find a little nub where you can pry without jacking up the gasket. There we go. Alright. Now that moisture will be from when I hosed everything off. So I'll grab a paper towel. Now, I'm already glad that we popped this. I don't know. Yeah, I think you guys can see that. Oh, what I do with my little pointer tool? So I stab myself in the thumb with it. This is the fuel inlet screen right down here. Ooh, too far. There we go. See all this garbage? That is stuff that managed to get past the fuel filter somehow. So, we definitely want to clean all that crap out. But we'll continue with the, the disassembly here. If you can get a hold of the bottom actual diaphragm, which I have not yet, it tends to peel off, there we go, much easier than the gasket from the diaphragm. Now you see how I was careful with that to kind of slowly peel it off. If this is still good, it's going to go back on. And you can see these little flapper valves are still pliable. And that is pliable. Which makes me think this wasn't put away with bad gas in it or with gas in it that went bad. So, that's a good sign. Everything else looks pretty clean. Might... Probably gonna run the wire wheel across this. There's a little bit of corrosion here. So some moisture has gotten in at some point, which probably means this sat out either in a barn somewhere, or maybe it was on a coast, uh, who knows. But so far, we're not seeing anything here that's terrible. I mean, that screen a quick blast of air is going to take all that garbage out. So one way you can get a good idea of what you're facing is try and actuate your diaphragm through the, the vent hole here and you can see that's moving. So in reality this carburetor is probably fine. I probably could have gotten it to fire but as I already mentioned I want to get these these carburetor videos up so that folks have something to go by. Now the Tillotson HS, as we get this cover off, you're going to see has 
a couple welch plugs and most of the kits come with those and so most guys go ahead and pop them out right away and I've never found a reason to here's my kit plug and and there's the other one right there you would have to have a pretty serious issue to need to pop those out for cleaning and it's very very seldom that I personally come across that you basically would have needed fuel to caramelize to the point where it dried up under here so the way these carburetors work your fuel is inlet into this chamber here and then each let's see if I'm getting that I think there we go these holes right here are the fuel inlets and I can see the tip of each of these screws that's what meters it so the fuel comes in is drawn through under the welch plug here and then there's a series of holes in the carburetor bore there's no way I'll ever be able to show you those but they're in here and the further back they go the closer you are to your high-speed setting so there's usually two to three for the idle so that as the throttle bore changes position actually you can see one right here maybe right there so that's the high speed the others back through here are the low so as the throttle plate changes position and more air is flowing it can start drawing more fuel now anyway unless you have a really good reason to believe that there's a there's either dirt or something plugging one of these up under there don't pull it out one easy way to check with appropriate PPE meaning eye goggles is take your carb cleaner and blast a little bit through here and hold the the throttle plate open as you're blasting through and if you see carb cleaner come through it's not plugged so they're there because they needed to machine those passages that's why those are there they're not there because they need to be popped out on every rebuild kit so enough on that we see the gasket actually stuck down it stayed put here that's good uh, it didn't tear so we'll be able to reuse it got great movement on the needle here if you needed to service this which we don't but we're going to take this apart just so that it's chronicled you want to loosen this up and keep your finger on the inlet lever here so that it doesn't go sprawling in the way now you typically don't have to take the screw all the way out loosen it two-thirds of the way like that and I didn't go quite far enough and then you can slip the little axle past it there's your spring and the needle will fall out too eventually okay so that's it so just like with the other carburetors we've looked at the seat for the inlet needle here is just on the other side of this screen that's why this screen is where it's at you don't want that kind of crap to get down in there and cause leakage past the needle so if you were doing a full rebuild kit like this one you can see it comes with the the inlet arm it comes with the needle it does not come with a spring be damn careful you don't lose that you can still sometimes find these springs out on ebay or by a seller uh, you know who has their their store online and is a tillotson dealer but you've got to know the tillotson part number which means you've got a cross reference to the home light part number which can be a pain in the neck so just do your best not to lose it so with this style it's easiest to hang the needle and if you drop this a couple times it's okay as long as it doesn't fall off the bench it takes a, a bit of practice 
So I had it shifted to the side here so that I could slip the end underneath the screw and then I'm just pushing it over until it drops and now it's in. So while you're holding it down, screw this back. And this is just a retainer, it's not you don't need mighty torque on it, just get it good and snug. Alright, now just like most other carburetors, the spec calls for this to basically be level with the deck minus the gasket. Now this recessed well in here gives these a little more action, so they typically get set just a little bit lower. And that's where this one's at. I'm going to leave it there, this diaphragm. Other than having some debris from the vent side from when I cleaned this out. It's in great shape. I actually wouldn't be surprised if this is a kit that the previous owners installed uh, to attempt to get it running. Okay, so again, if you were doing a full kit, order of operation, you want your gasket down first on the inlet diaphragm side. On this side, you need the diaphragm down first because these flapper valves open and close with engine pulse these little passages right here. So if you get this reversed, they can't seal and it's going to flood out to beat hell just like that. So I'm going to blow this out real quick and take the uh, wire wheel and knock that corrosion off. I've put a real soft wire wheel on my bench grinder. You know, I can actually, that wheel, I can use it to strip paint off of old magnesium parts, all of that, and I don't damage it. Okay, so again, if uh, you should be able to do this. If you were putting a fresh kit in, all this would already be separate. You're going to line this up, and you've got the index holes to help you. And I don't have that right. That's hilarious. Come on, baby. Think. Where? Damn it. There we go. Every once in a while, I love it when my brain doesn't work. So again, there's the, the two index holes out here. And since this gasket has already been used, finding those depressions is real easy. So these are offset differently so you can't accidentally clock this cover the wrong way. When it drops down like that, you're set. Let's go ahead and get these screws in. The screws are two different sizes. You can't mix them up because you will not be able to tighten them. But if you're a novice carburetor rebuilder, and you're really not comfortable with this, maybe the first carb do one side at a time. But that does bring a note of caution. If you're using carburetor cleaner and you get this cover off and you see a bunch of old caramelized crap, but you're not necessarily sure yet if you need to replace your inlet needle, if you spray carb cleaner all through here and it gets on that needle, the needle tip, the rubber tip is going to swell and it's going to be garbage. So just kind of beware. All right. Doesn't need to be super tight. And you guys have seen enough of my videos to know that we do that side first so that we can pressurize the inlet needle side as we're putting it together, and that will tell us if we have any problems. So, let me get, whoop, get that gauge in the, geez. There we go. It's not gonna read. 
I'm not going to sit so you guys can read it super easily, but I'm going to do my standard. Ah, now what do we got going here? Look at that. It's leaking off awful fast. Why is that? The needle looked good, but is it? Or did I actually blow a little bit of junk in there? Wow. So there's a great example of why putting some pressure on this is a good idea. Because if I put that on the saw and tried to run it, we know what would happen. That thing, it would probably run. But the minute you shut it off, it would sit there and percolate fuel and flood it out fast. So what I'm going to do is get a few drops of fuel and put them down in there and see if lubricating that needle is all it needs. Or if we need to pop that back out and just replace it. Okay, that's enough to lube it. Now, obviously, you don't want to have your face right down there if you've got a known leak when you're pressurizing something. Oh, man, look at those bubbles. Check that out, folks. This couldn't demonstrate any better for me. Look at that. Leaking like a sieve. You know how much fuel that could pass down into the carb? Or into the, the engine, unintentionally? All right, back this off, and we're going to take another peek at that needle. Because it should not be doing that. And it's funny because I don't see a damn thing wrong with that. You guys know me, I don't like to replace stuff that doesn't need replaced. I don't see anything down there in the seat either. That's funny. Well, we'll flush it out with a little fuel. And we will give it one more try. Things like this, when I find them, make me think that when I've gotten a hold of a saw that's not running, that it has no new parts in the carburetor, that the, the previous guy who worked on it probably ran into some of this stuff but didn't have the, the equipment or the knowledge to figure out what was going on. So in the end, for those of us that collect these, that's good, but... Not if they're going in the garbage can instead of going on eBay. I'd much rather all you owners know how to work on them. All right, let's give this another shot. Still leaking. But not as much. Now, any leak is going to create a big... Oh, did you see that? Our spring is getting a little weak. We actually pumped it up to the point where it popped against the spring pressure. That's what it is. That damn spring is weak. Okay. Cool. So release that first. I'll send this like a rocket ship across the garage. I'll show you how we deal with that. Take your spring and stretch it a little bit. We'll start with that. Now that one coil looks pretty crummy now, but when you're putting it down into the cavity there, it doesn't matter. Get this needle back out. Within reason, 
a spring that gets a little weak like this you can fix quote unquote by stretching it like that. That should have added three or four PSI of holding to it. And hopefully enough to make it not leak. Wow. Oh, it's because it didn't set right. This is turning out to be a much longer video than what I had intended. But again, great examples of what can happen even when you have done a lot of these, you can still end up with the spring cocked just a little sideways. And then it's no good. And that's probably because of my little bending technique there. Look at that time. I think I got it. And the spring is perfectly straight. And factory, it sits very upright in there. Now uh, it cocks a little to the side. Okay. It's lined up that time. Come on, baby. There we go. Now they all leak. It's still a little faster than I'd prefer. Twelve is more than you need. See what if we can get her to nine. Okay. I mean, ideally you have no leakage, but it's an old carb. Most have some, and that's not bad. So we're going to run with it. So we'll just keep the pressure on there, and I'm going to index the nub into the inlet arm here with any luck without releasing all of our pressure. There we go. Now the whole point of this is if that arm is out of adjustment, sometimes as little as setting the cover on is enough to make that needle just go boosh right to zero. Now that didn't happen with this one. But we're going to keep pressure on there until all of these screws are tight. Again, these are small screws. You don't have to go ape with them. Just get them snug and let the lock washer do its job. Screws are tight, didn't go cascading to zero, we're good. This Tilson HS carb is now ready to go. So again, you got an old Super XL or 925 or XL76, Super XL130, Super XL67, a ton of HS carbs were used. This kit is around 10 bucks. This one's not Tillotson, but it is one that I've used before. And even though it's made in China, I've had good luck with these. Uh, say $10 kit versus if you find a new carb, you're probably going to be looking at $100. So it is that easy. As always, if you've got questions, you're looking at a carb, something's not quite right, drop me an email, send a pic, let me know what's going on, and I'll try to walk you through it.